Hi, I'm journalist James Jennings. I'm here once again with renowned psychic medium Katarina Legato. Hello. Hello, James. This is exciting. Very exciting. I'm so excited. We've picked a, a really stunning location today. So we're at Duntry League in Orange, New South Wales. It's a heritage listed mansion that was built in 1876 mm. by a guy called James Dalton. Now, James and his wife Margaret lived here with their 12 children. That's a lot of they kids. They were a very busy couple. They were very busy. Very busy. Very busy. Very there wasn't television back in those days. Exactly. What, what would have kept them occupied? Uh, so anyway, 12 kids running around this joint. Now, James passed away in 1919. Uh, Duntry League kind of like swapped hands of a few people after that period of time. Mm. Uh, the big notable thing that happened was in World War II, it was a convalescent hospital for returning wounded soldiers. So that would come here to recover. So that happened up until about 1945. And then after that, Orange Golf Club bought it and turned it into a guest house. And that's what it is now. Uh, now I worked here 25 years ago, Kat, would you believe? Wow. Yeah, I know, long time. It's a long time. It is a long time. And I heard stories from staff members back then about paranormal stuff that would happen in the guest house. Stories about guests getting freaked out in the middle of the night, running out, sleeping in their car, people seeing ghostly figures in their room, like really freaky stuff. Mm. Now, I contacted the manager here and 25 years later, they still get those stories. There are still stories about paranormal, bump in the night, spooky mm -hmm. stuff that is going I on. Bet. So I thought, what a great spot for Katarina and I to come and check out and see what's going on. Are you ready to do this? I'm absolutely ready. What's your vibe? What are you feeling My from My vibe is um, there's quite a bit going on inside. There's, there's like I can feel joyful energies and I can also feel sadness. I'm kind of seeing um, the soldiers and you know, walking the grounds, they're, they're wounded, they're healing, they're just trying to mm. kind of recover from everything they've been through. Mm. But I also see like horses and we're coming with the carriages and all the beautiful glamorous women all dressed and yeah. arriving for the ball and it's just this, you've got a bit of everything going on here. Exactly. The place it's is quite interesting. Yeah. Yes. The history is, is, is long and rich here. So very much so. What we're gonna do is basically go inside. Katarina's gonna tune in and we're gonna see just how many guests are staying at Duntry League that we, most people can't see. Um, are we ready to do Let's this? Let's do it, yes. All, all I've got to say is I'm happy I'm doing this with Kat and not myself. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> all right, let's, let's head in. Let's head in. Let's step in through the doorway let's here. Let's do it. Into this very magnificent, um, I guess, hallway greeting space. Back, the Daltons would have greeted all their guests here and it's quite a grand little entrance, isn't it? Beautiful very tiles. Very much beautiful. High ceilings, uh, beautiful wooden staircase. What's your feeling from stepping inside Extremely here? Extremely, very grand, a very proud man, so proud of his home. I just feel like he put so much of himself into this home and like the architecture and planning of it and the building of it. I feel like his heart, his soul is still here. He's very grounded here, very, this is my home. So proud. It's a magnificent building, heritage listed yeah. mansion. And uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of like, if there are presences in the building, what's your, what's your feeling so far? There's a very much a combination of different vibes I'm getting in this home. Like I feel the actual family that lived here and the, like James, the owner, very proud, very strong. And this feeling of family, of laughter, of children. But then I also feel that this then became some sort of a, like a, I wouldn't say a hospital, but somewhere where obviously in World War II, mm. they took in the soldiers and I feel the pain, the agony, the loss, a sense of death, of passing away and despair. So there's a real mixture of energies. There's this sort of, you know, from happiness and proud to, it then became this place of where it harbored all these injured men and the nurses and it, I, I don't know I feel like there were also some nuns I feel that were taking care of the injured soldiers and um, the wounded men I feel like there was a lot of fretting and 
you know, so busy, so busy all the time running on their feet, taking care of all the injured soldiers. Mm. So there's that undertone also in here. So it's like there's two realities going on at the same time. Right, mm. right. That's, that's, a lot, that's a lot going on. And staff who work here, the cleaners and various other staff, mm. have reported some very obvious uh, ghostly things have happened. People have seen a, a ghostly figure of a woman here. Mm. People have seen glasses move, mm. TVs turn on on their own, doors close and lock on their own. So there is probably a lot of things up these stairs that are waiting mm. for us. Uh, I'm uh, lucky or maybe unlucky, <laughs> some could say, to have the master key so we can pretty much get into every room here and find out who or what's inside. Yes, yeah. you, let's, you ready? <laughs> yes, let's do it. Before we set off to explore the dark, creepy corners of the mansion, I sat down with Duntry League General Manager Michelle Carroll to ask her about the many paranormal incidents that have been witnessed by both staff and guests at Duntry League. Now, you've worked at Duntry League for a while, yeah? Uh, yes, I'm be 10 years in March this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So do you feel a, a bit of an attachment to Duntry League? I certainly do, yeah. 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 Very much so. Yeah. Now, since you've worked here for 10 years, um, have you heard uh, the paranormal stories that go on in Duntry League? Yes, we're here. I've heard from um, staff members, especially our cleaning staff, and also guests have um, some stories to tell us when they check out of the morning. Mm. Right, right. What, do you remember the first time you heard a story? Like, what's the, when's the first time you heard someone tell you about this, and what was your reaction? Uh, it was quite early on when I first started, because I was quite interested in the mansion itself and the history and everything mm. so it was very early and I remember they were checking out at reception and I started to hear this story and I thought oh so I got up and and it was all about um the children running around the the guest house and up and down the staircases and mm, right so mm. tell us tell us a bit about that so specifically there was one couple they were the only ones here in the guest house one night mm -hmm. they came down the next morning and were complaining about all these children that were running around all night up the staircase and on the around the corridors mm. and we went oh, you were the only ones here last night wow. so they were quite taken aback by that and, and tell me about some of the other stories that you've heard from let's 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 uh, talk about maybe some of the workers here some of the people who work here uh, yes so we have a staff member one of the office staff members actually not so long ago um, when we were locked down completely um, she went up to room seven mm -hmm. Um, and the back balcony doors were open. Mm -hmm. uh, she went to close them and they closed themselves and the actual latch latched over on its own. So she oh, wow. hightailed it out of there. Now, let's talk a bit about room nine mm -hmm. because um, you were telling me earlier that there was quite, there's quite a bit of activity and yes. reports from there. So yes. tell me about that. Yeah. So we've had re um, guests um, report back that um, while they're sleeping at night, they can feel someone sit on the bed and sometimes lie on the bed next to them. Wow. Um, we have a gentleman that um, comes regularly for work and he actually requests to be in that room as well. He gets quite a comfort from that, I guess. But, wow. Yeah, but quite a few guests have said that they felt something sit or the pressure on the bed in room nine, yeah. Yeah, mm. how interesting mm. that in, you know, there are people who seek out that kind of yeah. thing. Mm. I guess if you get lonely. True. You know, you've got to take what you can get. <laughs> Uh, and, and what about some other stories? Uh, you mentioned off camera earlier something about a glass. Yeah, so room six, um, our, one of our cleaners, housekeepers, um, she'd only been here two days and she was in room six and um, a glass on the table moved across the table. But she's fine with that. She's quite in tune with that sort of thing. So she quite enjoys and gets a, um, feels comfortable right. with anything that happens. Yeah. Didn't spook her. No, not at all. No, no. She's very, very happy for those sort of things to, to happen to her. Right. Mm. And any mm. other sort of quite notable stories that you've heard since um, you've been here? We've had um, stories of kettles at night time just turning on um, in the middle of the night. Mm. Um, in room two, we've had a lady say that she saw an actual vision or, or an outline of a, a lady in a white dress. Mm. Mm. And just also just creaks and all night. So tell me, do you get any particular feelings when you come into Duntry League yourself? Uh, I do. I get sort of like a tingling feeling when I come into the actual mansion itself. I haven't experienced anything specifically mm. um, that's scared me. 
completely. But yeah, there's definitely a, a feeling, um, like yeah, a tingling. Not long after our chat with Michelle, odd things began to happen. While we were in the lobby, a strong smell of cigar smoke came from nowhere, followed by a door opening and slamming shut all on its own. All right, Kat, so we both got a bit of a smell of cigar smoke. Yeah, what that's is James. F- that's James Dorman. Yeah, I believe I feel like he's not happy that we're kind of visiting. It's like this is my home and um, what are you doing here kind of thing. Do you think he was slamming the door? Well, he's about to slam it again <laughs> and that's him. So I think we just need to reassure him that we're here to visit. Again, I'm not here to encourage you to go home, James, that's completely up to you. Um, We're just here to enlighten people and share your beautiful home Mm. and and share this wonderful experience. So hopefully you're going to just calm Calm down down and not feel so upset at us. So he's worried worried we're here to evict him and... uh... Well, because of the nature of the work that I do, because I've been doing this for 30 years, when I go into a haunted environment, I usually am always there to help the souls to cross over. I'm not into using spirits for entertainment like a lot of these places are doing spirit tours and that. I think that that's really mean. When I go to a home or an environment that people call me to, it's to help these souls cross over. Yeah. So he's obviously feeling that I'm a threat to him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so well, I'm, you... that's, yeah, so I'm just going to let him chill. Oh, the door's opening again. And um, it's going the opposite way. Tell him that it's okay, that we don't need to, um, you don't need to be concerned. Okay, that's him saying we can go in. This is him now saying, it's cool. I'm not here to help you to transition into the spirit world. Um, This is your home and I totally respect it. So we're going to go upstairs now to see the rest of the home. Thank you. Thank you, James. Okay. I love these elaborate um, stairs. It's beautiful. I'm actually getting a a weird sense of heaviness and nausea. Going up these stairs as well, um, it, it's a very odd. That's the hospital, the, when it was a hospital. Right. I feel like that's kind of it's taking a, over. It's a very, um, it feels very dense and kind of makes, it makes you feel a bit ill. Sick, yeah. This yeah. was the end, yeah, with injured soldiers and just feeling very sick in the... In my stomach, like I feel like nauseous and vomiting, and you know, when you're in pain and fever, I feel like burning. There's a heat. Yeah, no, it feels really strange. Nauseating. Nauseating is a good word for it. Mm. Oh, there's some really but, odd smells. Yeah. Um, this is what we're getting. Like we're getting sort of the original reality of the grandeur and of a family home, and then. The hospital and the suffering and mm. the, the yeah. pain. Oof. It's very, there's a very heavy feeling. It's very heavy and very sickly. Yeah. Like you just, waves of sickness, fever, pain, infection. Yeah. Smell all the different um, disinfectants and Yeah, yeah let, and let's chemicals. move out of this spot. I don't like it. <laughs> it does not feel good at yes. all. This room looks... Quite nice. This is um, a stained glass window that James Dalton uh, got a papal knighthood. Wow. So this is to celebrate that. I feel like this was like a little sitting room for his wife also. I feel like she would sit here and read her book and the sunlight would come in through the stained glass window and it was like this space that was quite serene and... Mm. Just wear her book and a cup of tea, like afternoon tea. It's a beautiful spot for it's it. It's very lovely. It was really warm, especially in winter. And the sun's beaming in. I feel like she still has sort of fond memories of this room. And it was just, yeah, you know, you have this little space in your home that you really enjoy. This was her quiet space. Her little nook. Her little nook, definitely. Yeah. 
And just sitting here on the lounge is two lovely ladies. They're giggling, <laughs> two older women yeah. in spirit. And I feel like what they're telling me is that they used to come here when they were younger and when it was a hotel. Well, it still is a hotel, I'm sorry. And, and they would have like a weekend here. It was their girlfriend, girly weekend. Okay. Yeah, and now that they've passed away, they often return here to visit because it was one of their favourite places that they would... So they're here today, they like to be part of the video to, to express how much joy that they felt every time they came here and had their little holidays and right. catch up and got away from family and husbands and children. It was like, oh, it was all too much. Right. And we'd come here and put our feet up and play golf and... Have a wonderful time. How fascinating. Yes. So, so basically in the spirit world, if people aren't ready to move on, mm -hmm. they can actually what revisit places that give them happy memories from when they were alive. That's actually something that they can do. They can. Or when you are in the spirit world, even if where you've gone home properly, you will often um, think of special places and it's like, your essence, your your memories, oh. you find yourself reliving that moment. Right. So these two women aren't necessarily lost souls. I feel like they have crossed over, but they're reliving oh, a memory. Okay. So they projected themselves here. Right. Their consciousness has projected themselves here in this room and on this lounge and they're having a giggle and they're talking about the past and mm. you know, how they used to look forward to this. It was obviously something they did once a year and it was really special and they used to get away from the family and just have a weekend of putting their feet up and yeah. playing a bit of golf. So they're just projecting back into what was once a part of their reality. Right. Good way to get cheap accommodation is come and stay somewhere when you're dead. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like this was just their happy place. Okay, here we are in room eight. Oh, the, I just got like a, a really mm. strong smell of perfume coming yeah, in here. Yeah, absolutely. Powerful what? smell of rose and um, I feel like rose and jasmine. That's really strong. It's very strong. It's got that really kind of old worldly smell perfume and they've made perfumes from flowers and yeah it's like something that I feel this woman made she made her own perfumes I feel like it's 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 like I see her and she's dressed in white and she's got this beautiful hat on and she's a very glamorous perhaps one of his daughters I feel okay and I feel like she was quite glamorous and this this perfume was like her her mark, everybody knew her by her perfume, so she loved perfume. It's right. almost like she's saying to me, I'd bathe in perfume, and, and so people knew her by her scent. Right. She was quite a, oh, I see, like she was the black sheep of the family. Oh. So she was the, like, she loved to seduce the men. <laughs> Ah. Perfume. She, she loved. She knew she was beautiful. She is very beautiful. Right. Small, tiny waist. Yeah. This beautiful white dress, and her skin's just so clear, and just everything about her is so immaculate. And mm. um, she wasn't at all interested in in marrying. So she was always in trouble because I feel because she's saying to me her father always was trying to set her up with somebody, and she just. Didn't want to be married. Didn't want to be she tied down. Didn't want to be tied down. I feel like she's like, you know, I just wanted to remain young and youthful and beautiful. And so I feel like she she kind of ran away and, and went to live overseas. And th th she was very worldly and very wanting to explore life. She didn't want to be tied down. Mm. It's like I feel she she sort of said to me she watched her mother have so many children and, and kind of everything that comes with having so many children and she didn't want to lose her tiny waist. She's yeah. laughing, I didn't want to lose my tiny But I feel like this was a she she this was like her room and it and it's very again happy memories mm. of where she'd come and choose her gown for the day and wear her perfume and off she'd go. She very social. She was always invited to parties and balls mm. and functions. She was always, because she was so social, so much fun. So I feel like... She sounds like a lot of fun. 
Like yeah, a... I feel like she's um, been waiting to be part of this video today. I feel like she wanted to tell us all about her life and um, her travel. She travelled, um, I feel like she travelled into Europe and um, I feel like she had all these men always sort of on their knees to her. But <laughs> um, I don't feel she ever married. I feel mm. like she perhaps died i mean back then too you know like it was it wasn't unusual for a, for to be dead by 50 kind of thing. Yeah. so I feel like life expectancy was a lot shorter yes yeah. so i feel like she probably got to somewhere around the 50s and just passed away right i sort of feel like almost like um pneumonia or something of that like she passed of that right but it's like she's saying, I had so much fun in my life. Okay. And, and she has no regrets. Okay. That's a, that's a good attitude to have. Mm. This was her fireplace where she'd sit and obviously light her fire and mm. well, the servants would light her fire. Light her of course. Fire. Of course. Gosh. Don't need to do so it yourself. Jeez. She's like, I didn't light my own fire. <laughs> so, yeah, and she'd sit here and, yeah, and contemplate all her lovers and... Okay, wow, mm. very interesting character. Very interesting. So she seems pretty happy. She's not a she's, she's not a upset. happy spirit, yes. And coming back and visiting again, projecting herself back into the memories of when she was young and when she started out. Mm. Yeah. But I feel her dad, she's saying, was always very worried about her because she was sort of a bit of a wild seed. Right. So she went against the grain for the day. Absolutely. Whereas yeah. I think feel like the rest of the sisters got married and kind of did what they were raised to do. Mm. Mm. Whereas she never married. Yeah. Mm. Well, should we get into another room and yeah, see? Yeah, so that's what's happening here. And hence the perfume. I feel she's, this is her gift. She's bringing us this gift of her beautiful scent. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing. She sure made beautiful. it a powerful smell. Like, it's so powerful. How, how can they conjure that? Because it's it's uh, like it, there's un, it's absolutely undeniable that you can smell it. Yeah, it is. It's like very, how how does that happen? It's part of your memories. It's part of kind of what she's projecting in. Right. In her reality, she still smells her perfume. She's still in this beautiful dress. It must have been one of her favourite dresses. Mm. So she's brought her reality back here into this reality. And she can share that with and us. And share. And yeah, obviously we're picking up that scent. And, the, mm. and it meant a lot to her. It was like her signature scent. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, let's go check out another room and see uh, yeah. what we find. So something really strange happened when we were in room eight. Just okay. before, yeah. so you know, you're talking about the girl with the perfume, the flirty girl. The yeah. flirty girl. I actually felt her. Um, I got this image in my mind shot in of like she came up and kind of like tapped me, and we're like, "Hey, who are you?" And it was in a very flirty kind of way. She was very flirty. And I and I was just kind of like, uh, like mm. I didn't say it at the time because I was too weirded out. But that that just happened. Yeah, um, of course, she fancied you. <laughs> she loved the men, she loved the attention and you didn't give her enough attention, so she's like... That's actually how it felt. That's how it felt. It felt how like dare I didn't... you not acknowledge my beauty? Well, I don't have a girlfriend in real life, so maybe I can get a girlfriend in the... You could take her home, she'd be easy to care with. And that beautiful perfume, imagine... It's people true. People pay to buy those reeds to have sent through their yeah. homes. You'd have it naturally. Nice. <laughs> Perfect, you've just found your soulmate. <laughs> Put her in the back of the car on the way home. Does that mean I get to inherit this mansion? Because the deal could be getting better by the you minute. You never know. We'll have, we, if, if we run into James Dalton somewhere, we'll have a chat. We'll have him. a chat. He he might, potential he might. Um, marriage, potential husband. Well, she didn't want to get married, but maybe I could be the man to change that. Who knows? She's been waiting for you. <laughs> For hundreds of years, James. <laughs> this sounds like the beginning you of You could a... actually step into her reality. Oh. You could, yeah, you could. God. You could time travel because the power of love would help you to time travel into her reality. Wow, this doesn't sound like a movie like Ghosts with like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, her Patrick Swayze. And you could become <laughs> her the husband she never had or she may... Come into your reality and be this invisible wife. Wow. 
Well, that could be interesting. It could be interesting. Sounds like the beginning of a, of a strange movie. Oh, it's a very strange romance. So yeah. She could become part of your life. and. I've had weirder romances in life, Kat, so to yep, be honest, it's probably have. not going to freak me out too much. No. You could ghost introduce wife. her to... Yeah, your ghost wife. You could introduce her to your friends. And <laughs> I like it. They'd smell her, even if they couldn't see yeah, her. Yeah, it's I, like she's here. I think can, they would smell her. Yeah, absolutely. They would have smelled that beautiful perfume. It was very nice. She's giggling now. She, okay. She'll come. She All may right. be coming home with you tonight, James. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I didn't bargain for this. She might get into bed with you tonight. <laughs> keep, keep her feet warm. Oh, my God. Well, tonight's going to be uh, possibly quite weird. Very weird. Yeah. This is what happens sometimes. They will follow you home. Right. Okay. Like mm. a like a stray dog. Not that I'm calling if, her a stray if dog. If they feel attracted to you, they will follow you home. Wow. Okay. Well. Drawn to you, so... I'm not sure if I have that much lure, animal magnetism, but who knows? Who knows, Kat? We will have to, <laughs> have to wait and see. Call you in the morning and see how your night went. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let's change the topic. Uh, we, we've stepped into this is room seven. So let's uh, <sighs> focus in on room seven and tell me what you can feel. I and feel see. very exhausted and tired in here. I'm, I'm sort of seeing. I'm seeing like quite a few beds lined up and um, wounded men, wounded men. So I'm seeing more of the times of when this was a hospital. Um, I feel like there were beds lined up. And um, sometimes they'd come and sit out here to get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. Like the, the nurses would help them to come out. Yeah. I also feel like women, I, I can hear women crying so... I'm sort of wondering if that was part of perhaps they came to 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 reconnect with their loved ones, a soldier, oh. a husband and that died or was really sick and wounded because I'm hearing the wailing, crying like despair. Yeah. Get well, don't leave me, don't go. It's that kind of that's what I'm picking up in here. Yeah. So this was where obviously they would keep quite a few soldiers. Um, and, and the, the wives would come or the girlfriends and visit, come and go and they'd sit out here and take in some fresh air. Yeah, okay. So it, it's it, it a, bit has of a, a sad vibe. very sad, very, very sad, also very sick, very painful. Mm. Well, in this particular... Trauma, trauma, sorry, just this trauma of war. Yeah, yeah. The I... Hunger. Yeah, isn't it interesting that like you can have, you know, a room over here which has a completely... She's in her own reality then. Yeah, and there's a different one going on over there's here. There's a different reality here of one of the war times of... Mm. And in this particular room, um, Michelle, the, uh, the manager here, said that one of her colleagues was in here mm. and this door closed itself mm. and she witnessed the latch go over and lock, snap shut. Yes. They don't want to be disturbed. Yeah, and she tore out resting. of here, tore out of here in, in terror. For sure. So things things have happened in here. Mm. Oh, very much. It's very present of the soldiers. Quite a few of them are still kind of laying here in that reality, still stuck in that time of when they were injured, of when they were trying to recover and, you know, holding on for dear life. Yeah. Not knowing if they were going to pull through. Yeah, it's, mm. it is very tragic. Very. So they often don't like to be disturbed. So when they have, you know, visitors and people, you know, coming to visit, it it's, can be very disruptive. Yeah. So next we're going to go to room... The super haunted room. It's renowned for how haunted that room yeah, is. Yeah, number nine. Uh, apparently a lot of activity goes on in there. So let's go check out yes. the feeling. Let's check it out. Okay. Okay. Right, so Katarina, we're in room nine. Uh, Michelle, the manager, has told us that this is one of the rooms that gets the most amount of paranormal activity. Mm. Uh, lots of things have gone on in here. What's your mm. feeling? A lot of anger. Okay. There's a definitely like a, an open portal in this corner above us and I feel like there's a lot of spirit coming in and out, a lot of lost souls because the anger just drawing in other angry spirits and angry souls. Mm. 
So it, it feels like this man is like just stomping and I'm just so angry and it's like I didn't want to be dead kind of thing, you know. I didn't want to die. I feel like he died of a heart attack. Right. And it was like... He feels robbed. Yeah, robbed of life, but robbed. I feel like he had money. He was wealthy. And it's like, I don't want to be dead. Right. I don't want to be here. And it's like he doesn't like it when guests come and stay here. It's like, this is my space. How dare you come here? Right. Mm. Right. So the reason why so many guests report weird things happening in this room. It's his way of scaring them. Right. Getting them out. Well, it's, apparently it works. Well, it would do. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sleep in here if they paid me to. Yeah. Well, there are there are stories there are stories of people who've like perhaps this room where they've left and gone and slept in their car the night. So mm. this yeah. might this might be the room where that's. Um, He's well, definitely the claiming this as his space. His space. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it. I must say, compared to room eight, which felt very light and there was the perfume smell. Mm. Here feels it does feel a lot heavier and denser yeah, and angry. Yeah, I yeah. And lots of spirits coming in and out. He's just drawing in other spirits, other angry spirits, lost spirits. Right. Just like him. Right. Just and in this, just in this space. Headachey, very headachey. Yeah, this is like he's claiming this is his space. Mm. He's got his own reality happening in here. You right. know. His own thing. It's it, 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 it's much more than just a room for him. We're seeing it in physical, mm. in a physical dimension. It's just a room, but for him, it's almost like it transforms into a house or some sort of. Uh, yeah, I feel like he may be a son, or perhaps he lived here after the the James and all his family were finished. Perhaps he moved. He was a new owner. Okay, I'm not sure. Right, but I feel he was a very. He wasn't as nice as James. This this man was very angry and right. mean and nasty and okay. materialistic, you know. So he could have been someone else who lived here is what I feel okay. after the, the original family obviously died and passed away. So he may be someone, I think, who inherited this space. I see. And it's like, I think this was like his bedroom and, you know, it was... It's, it's like he just doesn't want people here. That's right. what he said, I just don't want people here. I don't know why they're coming here all the time. Mm. I don't want anybody here. This is my damn house, that's what he's saying. Right. So it's basically, this is my space, get out. Yeah, pretty much. He, in his mind, he owns this. This is his. Yeah. Well, he did own it. He, I okay. feel he did obviously own it at some stage. So he still sees this as his home. Mm. So, Kat, what I find fascinating about what we've looked at today is that there seems to be different realities going on in different rooms. So it's it's not like, I mean, I guess when people think of haunted houses or hotels or whatever, they, they might think, oh, there's one or more ghosts. Mm -hmm. They're all aware of each other. They might have lived here in the past. But what I'm getting from today from you is that there's not only different ghosts here, but they're experiencing different realities in different rooms. It's a lot for people to get their heads around. I mean, I'm, I can kind of grasp it, but it's have I captured that right? Is that what is that what's going on? Yeah, every individual is living their own reality, so they're projecting their own reality into, as we saw in the different rooms in yeah. this hotel for us. So it's like when we're here in our physical world, we are all experiencing our own reality. Mm. We hang out with certain people. We, we, you know, we we all have our own little reality going on within this huge reality, yeah. that is, you know, the three D reality. So, it's the same. Once you die, especially if you haven't crossed over, and and moved on to higher realms, then what happens is that you keep re-experiencing your life and those memories of your life over and over again and you're not even aware of anybody else so you're not aware of anyone else's right. reality because you're busy with your own reality again just like we're living our lives in this 3d mm. we're all living our own lives and we're not often aware of someone else's reality we're not often aware of what's happening with our neighbor yes. or in the neighbor you know next to the neighbor because we've got our own thing happening mm. in our home so it's the same when you die 
um, if you're not moving on and, and doing the, the work in spirit that we're meant to do, you can be stuck in a time zone. Mm. And, and, and so that can be an aspect of your life that you are stuck in. It's just yeah. like when people in 3D are just stuck and can't move forward. So they're stuck in a certain point of of their lives, of their reality, and they just keep reliving that, reliving it over and over again, unaware, until maybe a physical person comes through and kind of, you know, walks through them or walks into their reality. And it's like, who the hell are you? That's how the spirits look at it. Like, who are you? How the dare you? Or the intruders in their reality. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And the best movie that I always... Um, tell people about is the one with Nicole Kidman, The Others. I think that uh, that best explains it. That movie is just amazing. It's so well captured of what it's like to be in spirit and what it's like to be in physical reality and all trying to share this same space. Uh, I see. Mm. I see. So the living essentially are giving them a kind of wake-up call or, or they're snapping them out of the fact that, that they're not really experiencing their reality. Something else is going on as well. Mm. But because they're so anchored into their own reality, they don't like it when we intrude on that. And that's when sometimes no. I guess they get because a bit they're cranky. afraid. They're afraid. They're, they're stuck. They're earthbound, and they're afraid. So in a way, it's it's like this hotel is a collection of different memories. Yes, and happy memories, sad memories, angry memories. Mm. You know, we had the soldiers and, and, and their weeping wives. So there, there's all these different realities going on within this mm. building. And can any of them choose to move on? Like of course. There's always help on the other side. There's always family members. There's, you know, spirit guides. There's always an opportunity to move on. Do you think they're aware that they can move on if they wanted to? Not necessarily. Again, if they're really stuck in their reality, like, mm. for instance, that really angry man, heck, it would take a lot of work. I've come across spirits like that in mm. people's homes, and it's a lot of work to finally move them on, mm. to get them to calm down, to get them to kind of accept the light, to return to God, and, mm. and, and that's a lot of hard work. Someone yeah. like that would be a lot of hard work. Right. Whereas others, you know, when I go to homes to cross over and help spirits to return home, there's always like, you know, if you look up, you'll see your mum, your dad, or even a pet will show up, someone that, will, and they feel safe. It's like, oh, then that love connection uh. awakens and, oh, like, there's my mum or there's my dog mm. or whoever, and the heart opens up. So once the heart opens up, the heart chakra opens up, mm. then they're kind of, connecting to their divine spark. Yeah. And once that divine spark's activated, they know that they're safe to move into those higher dimensions. Right. So if any of the spirits here, let's say, you know, it sounds like some don't want to move on. If any, if any did want to move on, would they have the capability of letting you know that? Would they be able to, like, kind of let you know that yeah. that's what they require? Yeah. But as we saw with door slamming and... Um, um, I Weird really smells. Didn't, yeah, they feel really set here. They feel really comfortable for now. And who knows, that could change tomorrow. Mm. And I think that we have brought a lot of light here today. So we've also planted the seeds. We haven't officially crossed them over, but we've brought in some light. We've planted yeah. some seeds that I feel will grow. And they may awaken out of the hypnotic state that they're in mm. to go, hey, I feel some light. I, I'm thinking different. I'm feeling different. And it might be enough to that, shift them. To shift them. Mm. I always believe, you know, miracles happen. And sometimes unknowingly we can go past a spirit and our energy, our vibration just awakens them without us even knowing or doing anything. Well, that's, yeah. We all have the light, the spark of God within us. So it's, you know, we're walking past a spirit, we don't notice them and that spark may activate their spark. Interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. And at the top of Duntry League, the top floor we're at right now um this is the perfect example it's like there is a room to my right that feels very dark mm. and i do not want to go in there mm. um, but right next to it there is this beautiful light room mm. 
that used to be, I believe, the chapel. So maybe yeah. let's go take a look in there because it might be a, a good place to end our journey. Yes, yeah, a peaceful space. Well, this room we're in right now has these big, beautiful arch windows with lots of sunlight, which is a nice contrast from some of the dark rooms mm. downstairs, both dark in a, in a literal and figurative sense. Mm. Uh, but out the window, we can kind of look out onto the beautiful gardens around Duntry League and the golf course. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's stunning. Um, you know, if I was to stay in this hotel, I'd be wanting this room, I think. It's... I'd be definitely wanting this room more so. Yeah. So, I don't know, I would, you know, I would say today's experience overall has been pretty bizarre. There's been slammed doors, there's been really weird smells that have come mm. in, there's been feelings of nausea. Yeah. Um, rooms with really different energetic feelings. And I know that that sounds a bit abstract, probably for some people to, to get their head around. They might think it's a bit airy-fairy, but you can feel it. Like, you know mm. when you step into a room that feels negative or dark or heavy, you know when something feels lighter and brighter and has a nice energy. And the bizarre thing about Duntry League is you get that experience. It varies from room to room. Sure right? does, yeah. 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 It's yeah. like every room has its own little sort of reality going on. Yeah. It's own and set of spirits and um, they're kind of reliving, rehashing their realities. Mm. Is this something that you see quite regularly with... Um, with, with haunted places, that there can be different realities coexisting, you know, almost like different layers of time kind of like smooshed on top of yeah, each other? Yeah, compressed and, yeah, reality within a reality within a reality within a reality. Yeah. So it's about sort of, you know, clearing. Once you allow those spirits to return into the spirit realm, then those kind of realities start to dismantle Right. And then it's a bit of like just clearing the energy, the the footprint, you know, the energetic footprint that they've left behind. I see. See, this room was definitely, I feel, a chapel because I feel like prayer and silence. I feel like communi communicating to God. And isn't it amazing through, you know, mm. hundreds of years how this presence of prayer, I can still feel the prayer, the desire, mm. the communication with God. So... It just goes to show how even a hundred years or more can go by, but the, the, the essence, the energy of the past, the vibration, the frequency of the past will still remain. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. And Don't Your League stands as an absolute monument to that being true, mm. you know, in each different mm. room. Mm. So but I do, I feel like, you know... What, what was James's wife? I'm sorry, it slipped my mind. Uh, James's wife was named Margaret. No, Margaret. So I feel like she was quite a, you know, deeply religious woman. Mm. Very much about because I feel like this was her special, you know. But I feel she allowed many people, of, perhaps of the, you know, from the community to come here and pray. Mm. And yeah, it was quite. I feel she held. Um, mass here and yeah a lot of it's inclusive yes yes it wasn't just something that she kept for herself I feel she shared the the godliness and the holiness mm. of this room because it feels quite like a beautiful sacred space yeah it does it really it's does it's kind of a bit healing for both of us after it what is. we've been through I feel like we've gone through all this these different realities and it's been quite Whew, full on. It actually has felt really fun. This is my first experience mm. really going through a place like this. Mm. I mean, I know you've done it for decades and mm. you're an, an expert at this, but for me, this was a really eye-opening experience. Like, I mean, I smelt the smells, mm. I felt the feelings, and uh, it was undeniable. So I, I, there's a lot for me to process after this. I oh, mean, I'm, sure. I'm glad I did it, but it helps me understand what you do a lot more. Mm. Um, and, you know, and, and that's really fascinating. So I would say that if anyone at home is watching us or watching us from wherever you are, if you do want to have um, a, a night away with a potential supernatural experience, you probably, Duntry Leagues might be a definitely, good bet. Definitely, yeah, um, yeah. You would definitely... You'll definitely probably get something. Have an experience in, in this hotel for sure. Yeah. So this is going to be the first of probably many uh, visits to Horner Premises for us, which is exciting. We're going to go on a bit of a journey. Uh, for people who are watching at home, if you have suggestions of haunted places... Or perhaps you live in a haunted house. Perhaps you live in a haunted house and you would like us to come and visit, please comment, send us an email, uh, let us know, and we will do our best to make that happen. Um, as always, please like, subscribe, listen, watch, 
However way you can support us, please do. Uh, we love to do this for you, but your support helps us to keep going. Uh, and until the next time that we dip our toe into the supernatural, I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye and have an awesome day. In indeed. Goodbye from Duntry League.